Good morning. Pastor Wes here, and this is our daily devotion, My Utmost for Satana, episode 27 for the 30th of April. Today, we are reading from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. Ooh, big passage. Maybe you already know this one. It's fairly um, well known. It says this, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered, and it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but it rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. And this first line of verse 8, love, some translations say true love, never fails. Love's a simple word. L-O-V-E. Short. It's used throughout scripture. It's used throughout our culture. It's used often in the history of humanity. And yet, uh, it's a complicated and absolutely loaded with meaning word. And I'm just cautioning you today, I will not attempt to sum up the totality or even the cliff's notes of the totality of biblical, scriptural, and godly love here today. But I do want to talk about a couple aspects of it. I really enjoy this passage of scripture beginning at love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. I've used it as a sort of litany in my own life. Very often when I was dealing with a situation that made me unhappy, uh, made me angry, made me felt aggrieved, um, perhaps in my marriage, it was something I, I, I went back to often early in my marriage, and I would just go through this list and I would say, am I being patient? Am I being kind? Am I being envious? Am I being boastful? And usually I didn't have to get more than a line or two. And I realized that, well, at the very least, I'm part of the problem. Uh, and, and so it helps shift the focus back on me and living that righteous life that God desires of us. Uh, so I enjoy that. And that is a way in which we can use what we know we are called to and, and discipline ourselves to it. But there's another part of this, too. There is... A passion, an uncontrollable side. You know, the Bible tells us that what love is. It's not that we loved, but that Jesus loved us. And if you kind of take that to its logical conclusion, then, then the love that is in us is not because we love, but because Jesus loved us. It's in fact godly love. And so there's a passionate side of it. This first part that I talked about is the part that we can sort of control. We can look at a situation and say, am I being loving here? But then there's this second part that is completely beyond our control, like grace itself, like salvation itself. We don't grant those things. They are just an outpouring of God. They're within the power of God. And, and, and truly what a joy when we get to experience those things. And also the point, because then people can see God in us. And so love is a powerful thing. Uh, you might think of it, use this small microcosm of reading scripture. I read the Bible because I know I should. I know I need to. I know herein is one of the most important, time-honored, and time-tested ways for me to seek God. And that's something I want. And so I can discipline myself to that. But when I do read scripture, and I have those passages that touch me, or challenge me, they convict me, or they remind me of how lucky I am to have a relationship with God, and I experience those God moments, those bits of joy that we, we find in our Christian walk. You know, I didn't make those happen. Those came straight from God. Those are the love of God. And so there's kind of the two coins. But definitely the second, the latter, as I presented them, more important. Because without that outpouring of love from God, the presence of God in us, this other is just um, a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. The, the love of us is a response to the love of God. And so I'd encourage you, uh, look for both. Enjoy both. Uh, please, please, please discipline yourself to love as God loves. Discipline yourself. Hold yourself up to that image of genuine humanity that we were made in. But also make sure that you are seeking God 
not seeking just to be like God, but seeking God in a way that you experience him and you can experience that love again for yourself and also that um, it, it creates a means for that love to flow out of you and flow through you into the world which so desperately needs that same love. Until we meet again, God bless you.